Good morning, Good morning Bulldogs. Bulldogs. I'm Eddie Perez. I'm Julian Gutierrez. And this is Season 6. It's episode 3 of the ATV. We dedicate this episode to the victims of the 9-11 attacks. In addition, tomorrow marks the 20th anniversary of that dreadful day. So, to start, this episode we have the national anthem sung by our very own Cohia Choir. Please take a moment of silence while we listen. This episode will start off as a more serious note, as we all remember September 11, 2001 was a very upsetting day for America. The attacks on the Twin Towers were a travesty for all the citizens of America. For some it was the loss of loved ones, and for others it was the anxiety of their home being under attack. Either way, everyone felt this pain together and it was a very unifying moment. In memory of this event and its 20th anniversary, we have put together a special video for the student body. We decided to interview a police officer who was there during Ground Zero the day after the attacks. Uh, my name is Javier Rodriguez. I'm a retired sergeant for the Miami-Dade Police Department. I worked for Miami-Dade for 27 years. I was asked to come to this class uh, to speak about uh, the September 11th attack on the Twin Towers. Uh, First of all, I want to thank Cohia for inviting me here. It's an honor and a privilege for me to be here. Uh, we went there with the hopes of hopefully recovering victims that were alive or even to locate victims that weren't alive in order to give closure to family members uh, that lost uh, uh, family, friends, uh, husband, wives uh, that day. Uh, that's the reason why I went to Ground Zero uh, to try to assist in the recovery of victims and survivors, hopefully. Um, I brought the shovel that I used that day, the gloves and the, uh, the glasses. Um, as you walk into Ground Zero, once they allow you to go in, Basically, there's anything that you could need uh, to help you with the recovery. We basically went to Ground Zero with shovels, uh, trying to help dig uh, uh, for survivors, victims. Uh, but we couldn't do much with these shovels uh, because the beams were just too, too large. The rocks, the boulders were just too large for us to be able to dig with that. Uh, we formed a line, a large line of people with buckets and started filling the buckets with our hands uh, with debris and passed it back uh, and dumped it behind us in order to be able to try to continue to dig to look for survivors. Um, whenever someone heard a noise, everybody, believe it or not, this huge place, everybody stopped moving, stopped making no noise just to see if we heard someone that was yelling for help. Uh, when we determined that that's not wasn't the case, then we would continue to dig, continue to pass debris behind us. Uh, at some point, you get tired of digging because uh, it was um, just very strenuous. So I decided I would walk around because the place was so big and trying to see if I heard anything, if I saw anything, 
So I would see on the ground uh, pieces of clothing sticking out of the ground. And when I saw that, I thought that maybe that's a person. So of course I immediately would go to where that clothing was and I would grab it. But as you pull it out, it was just uh, like a shirt or a pants from someone, but it was disintegrated. It was just in, in pieces. We stayed a couple of days and then we ended up leaving. But before we did that, of course, we took a couple of photos of the scene of ourselves there. Uh, it was a tragic event, but obviously it's something that you want memories of uh, because it's, it's historical now. Uh, so we have a couple of pictures here that we took. Uh, whenever they would find a body, they marked the building with, and they had a security guard in front of it. When they found the body, they would put it inside of this building uh, to keep it there, uh, to identify the person, and eventually, I guess, take them either to the hospital or, or wherever they, they took them from here. But as you can clearly see on the picture, it says morgue. So you knew that that was a place for, for bodies. Uh, when you look through these pictures, you just see the devastation that this caused. Um, whether it was from the planes hitting or from when both towers fell, you can just see it was just miles and miles and miles of destruction through these pictures. A lot of windows were broken, a lot of businesses were destroyed, uh, cars were damaged. A lot of lives were lost, approximately 3,000 people died. Uh, over 400 law enforcement officers and firefighters died that day. Um, you can see cars are overturned. Um, there, this was a picture of, there was a fire department that was literally next to the Twin Towers. Every firefighter that worked at this building perished that day. But, uh, but to this day, 20 years later, you know, I still get emotional about it. I get mad about it, I'm upset about it. Um, I still don't understand why it happened, but, uh, but that's the world that we live in. So, but with that said, don't be afraid to fly. Don't be afraid to go to these places, you know, live your life normal, uh, not in fear, because that's what they want us to do. They want us to be in fear, you know, enjoy life, especially that you're young, go see new things, experience new things. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Come. Thank you. That's all for today, Bulldogs. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow us on Instagram and TikTok. And keep the Bulldog pride alive. Go Bulldogs!